Hello everyone, welcome to Seaborn. So today in this session we'll be learning with the some different type of libraries. Till now we learn all the libraries which is inbuilt there. This is also one library which is already predefined like your matplotlib, numpy and pandas. We call that Seaborn. Basically this is also a library it's used to visualize the things in a data structure. Things is nothing your data or data structure. We call it's a visual visualization library in Python. It is used to build on the top of matplotlib. How the things are doing. Here what happened whenever we working in this particular Seaborn it will be used for for analytic purpose we call as if you take as a best way to understand this we just understand in a that way like it's just to use for visualization or visualizing the data and data can be represented in a any way it will be your plots way it will be your g graphs way such that the data will be your key elements it's depend upon the data how the data will be there it's not a matter for them we use this thing for the 2d plotting 3d plotting what happened the basically in a matplotlib if you remember that we use lots of plotting like box plot histogram we already there but if you want to improvise that we use a seaborn basically seaborn is similar to the matplot just we need to improvise the plotting way like the gui whenever we saw the gui for anything we feel like that yeah this gui gui looks more beautiful or more uh, attractive or attention seeker the same way here when you use the seaborn concept in a matplotlib what happened it will be more clear more uh, informatic more that way like uh, everyone can get our attention so that we use with the help of matplot we use seaborn to do those more improvatic so that's the reason we call it so used for the visualization library and building in a top if you compare it this particular because it's a basically used with the matplotlib if we compare with the seaborn with the matplotlib we can to told as a it is used to summarize in a matplot with the easy the things the hard things are possible like this there is a lots of hard things are there we need to do the all these things in the easiest way we use this seaborn that particular library in that way we have a lots of thing in a seaborn to resolve two major problem which is we faced in a matplotlib so we are facing there is a two major issues in a matplotlib that is your default matplotlib parameters and one more is the working with data frame basically whenever we work with the default matplot uh, this things in a parameter we have issues on that and one more working with the data frames when we work with the data frame so that time also like we are facing some issue to solve that issue we use this seaborn let's move to understand some features here i include some of the features like there is a lots of features are there in a seaborn but i include the three features that is the most important that we used for building the themes for styling gra graphics that's why i told you the gui the gui why that is a, gr a graphical user interface what happened like how the gui more interactive or more better way we represent it that will be interact the people's how it will be looks like so when you use seaborn with the matplotly the same things happen and it gives a more variant on that that's the reason we go with this then we have plotting statistical time series data so with the help of this we can plot the statistical time series on that the data with the time series so there is one more important thing we can work the seaborn with the numpy pandas data structure as well like with the help of pandas if you design one data structure or already we have a data structure with the dot csv file we can use the seaborn to work on that particular area also except this all points we have other some of the other features also like it is used for your particular things on a statistical times and then it is used for your unvariant or variant data as also if you want to we use this for linear regression model also this is what exactly seaborn so i hope uh, you have idea what exactly the seaborn let's see how you have to import and install the package as well so there is the same rule for here also if you have already the uh, predefined package no need to install it if not we need to install from the your console so let's move to console to see that how we have to install it. so finally we are in a prompt so here let's uh, try to install that package that is any package to install in here we need to go with pip 
pip install we'll going with the install pip install the cbon pip install cbon and just we are moving to the run like we need to wait for the things to install it because this is one package to install all those particular things so this is the uh, this is the way how we have to install it you need to install in that particular way uh, i hope you are clear with the installation it needs time to uh, you can observe it it's already ongoing so it's a little bit time to go with the installation the c requirement already satisfied because already in my system c1 is there so that's the reason if you don't have this particular c1 installation you need to go with and install this particular c1 in this the same way how we are doing it comes to the other way so this is how you have to install the package of your c1 in your system let's move to understand how we have to go uh, import it in a jupyter notebook so finally we need to import it here so the same way how we import for the particular other libraries like your numpy pandas here also we import cbon cbon as mostly whenever we use the cbon we use a uh, uh, like sb as a cbon as sb sb as your alias name for the cbon like how for the other library we used it we can run this particular our uh, library it takes little bit time to run this particular area and then uh, our importing part will be done in the same way we can use the how the other libraries are using for the other libraries like your numpy matplots your pandas how it's used but whenever we use from the next session we'll be working on the things how it will be deferred to the other libraries how you have to use numpy pandas in the in the particular c bond so this is how we need to work on this particular things you can observe it's run properly means our importing part is done so this is how we have to use c bond indirectly in a jupyter notebook i hope you're clear with that so in the next session we'll be moving to us to understand how c bond is different from the matplot because as we know that matplot is also a visualization library then why we need to use c1 what is the main reason we'll be seeing in the next session thank you